<laughs> uh, there, there is no, there is competition between the two of you, but not animosity. There is not what? No, I mean... There's I competition at all, none. I think that it is a, a healthy, healthy collaboration. And of course, it is uh, when you, in all the times, they have been the great tennis players, and they play and each other, and there is, there it has, a, has to be a winner and a loser yeah. when you play tennis. Here is not a winner and a loser. The public enjoys both, enjoys the three in this case. I think that a lot of things they were said on many years yeah. back, and Luciano and me, the only thing we have is growing the, the friendship and the admiration because we know how difficult it is, yeah. and it is certainly... But Nonsense. the fact that he was there and he was good made you better because you wanted to be better. There's that kind of... Absolutely. I think the best thing that could happen to both is that we have been in the same time. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not doubt. It's not doubt that when, the, when there is a kind of the public, it goes for one, it goes for the other one. And then Jose also, when it comes, you know, yeah. so that when the public has their, you know. Yeah. And I, I'm convinced that... The big percentage of the public, they like the three, you see? Or if you talk Not about one or the other, they, they like, like the, three. the two. There are certain amount of people, and it is okay, certain amount, which I don't particularly care, you know, then they will say it is only you and nobody else. And it's not true, you know, sometimes some people try to tell you that, and then I go to performances of Luciano, and I see them in the performance, you know, yeah. and said, I said, I said, what are you doing here, you know? You told me that it's only me, and now you are coming to his performance, and say, come on, and say, you enjoyed him, enjoy Carreras, and enjoy all the tenors in that fact, you know? Yeah. Here is what Jose said to me about you and your voice, roll tape. Well, it's very difficult to characterize a voice. Uh, what I can characterize is the, mm, that apart, besides the, 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 the incredible instrument that Domingo has, he has a, a kind of a talent for music, musicality. Um, mm, the right, he is, to say it in a colloquial way, he sings in a way that is like he has been composing the music. He has such an instinct and talent for every for the phrasing, for the for the interpretation, for the musical line, for the legato that is absolutely extraordinary in in in, in our days and in this century, I would say. Wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> Jose, really, I mean, it is his extraordinary his, his generosity, you know, yeah. and you know, I mean, this really, Jose has it, and I should say it because of the way that Luciano's and my career were going, he has it very difficult. Yeah. He has it very difficult. And he came and he was in that group of people that was doing all the recordings and was selling out all the performances. Is also because of the extraordinary beauty, you know, of his voice. The beauty and the absolutely determination will he has shown you know, not only for the career, but for life, which, you know, very, very little people has the chance to show in their life, the determination for life, the determination to live. And now, you know, that he's enjoying it, his, his full life. So he's enjoying it, the singing and life more than ever, you know. Yeah. So let's hope that uh, uh, this uh, concert in Paris is not the last one, but we can enjoy it. And now we have, you know, we have been lucky to have first Subin Meta, yeah. which with his enthusiasm and really charisma, it was sensational. And then Jimmy Levine, which is the same, you know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's difficult when you come into thinking who could do these concerts. And it's very... What conductor? Very, which conductor can do it. And it is, I mean... I mean, maybe there are two, maybe one more, which I don't want to mention, you know, in order not to offend the other ones. But it is... It's it a is, short list. It is a short list, and people then can be... have that charisma, that love for music, love the three, and enjoy it every second of that concert, you know. A conductor. You're a singer on stage. A conductor can make a difference in your performance because of the music that he create with his musicians for you to come up on? Sure. I mean, this is the most important thing. I mean, I have been blessed 
just working with the greatest <coughs> of all, you know, all the great conductors. There is no one that I haven't worked with. And uh, it's, I'm lucky because you are right. A bad conductor can really put you in a bad position. Would you be different if on the <laughs> one night it's Sir George Schulte, on another night it's Jimmy, on another night it's Zubin, on another night it's, I don't know, do you ever, Herbert von Karajan? Of course. Another night it's Daniel Birnbaum, and it's another... I, this, this, is the, this, is the, this is the beauty and the enjoyment, you know. But the performance will be a little bit different, probably. It will be different, of course, and I hope that also every performance that I do with Levine is different. Too. Yeah. I don't, we, we are not machines. Even we, it's the same character, the same the music. The same character, the same music, you know, any performance that I do with Jimmy at the Met, you know, it has to be different. What's different? How you feel? The emotion that fills your... It's different the phrasing, it's different the palpitation, it's different uh, how you have wake up that day. And yeah. the, the important thing is when two musicians are working together, is that you can feel and you can feed each other, you know? Then you can feel, and I can anticipate, I can, one day, that day, for instance, I could be a little easier vocally, and I just, the way I go into one note, Jimmy will understand that I want to stay in that particular note longer, you know? Mm. And uh, if, I, if I go, if I press for a speed, he can understand also immediately Then I need, you know, for whatever reason, I need his help, you, need, you know, yeah. and you know this is the, this is a wonderful feeling about making music, you know, which, uh, of course, uh, the general public cannot understand. But this is also the magic thing. The public doesn't know why, but the public certainly know who they like, yeah. and I think it's people that is able to give a certain interpretations and to change not to be monotonous and to have something different to offer always, you know. Take a look at this. Uh, Otello, how would you rank it in terms of Don Jose, Otello? Great roles for you. Where would you put this? Well, Otello is without any doubt one of the most difficult roles to attempt because it is the combination, the Senate, of both singing and acting together. And uh, one of the greatest times I have had in my life doing Otello is when in the middle of the performance I forgot completely that I'm singing. Because that means that I'm really feeling easy yeah. and I am just concentrated so much in the role that, you know, is not uh, is not any way, any reason to worry about the vocal part. You're not even thinking about it. Not thinking about. And off at the sudden you said, my God, it's music there. I am singing. In the way that you and I are just talking, yes, you're I'm singing not, and yes, not conscious of I'm singing. I'm not acting. You, I, I, I'm, I, I'm acting, you know, and, and, and then you say, no, 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 I'm still singing. My God, but it seems so easy. Of course, those nights... There are very few, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Roll tape. This is Otello. Um, Franco Zeffirelli is directing, and uh, Justino Diaz is, Ia is Iago. Here it is. <laughs> And what's interesting about that, 
is just one shot. There's no cutting, just That's tracking. Yes, it is very, very interesting. And the only thing that you resent about films, contrary to live performances, is that you have to, you have to track, yeah. you know. And there is a fraction of a second which you might lose the concentration. It's the most difficult thing, not to lose the concentration because you have to, you have to really be, ca be careful on the lip sync, yeah. on the lips, you know. So it's the most difficult and complicated thing that exists. Because anything can distract you because there are cameras and, and they're moving. And well, no, 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 that. But uh, if I was singing in that moment, yeah. I wouldn't be distracted. But I have, I am singing, but I am singing to the music that I already record. Right. You know, so it's, it's difficult. Now, do you record the music first or record the... It's recorded. The music was recorded before. And then you do the acting. Are you hearing yes. the music and you're, somehow are you exactly. hearing it? Exactly. It's on a... I hear it, but the, the, you know, the brain right. has to pick it at the right time. So that's, that's a, the little distraction which is, drives you crazy. Yeah. Other great roles. I mean, what's there for you in terms of when I look back, when I decide that I have sung my last opera, I'm going to look back at a rich and full career, but there are going to be moments, maybe the night you walked onto the Met as a stand-in, maybe it's some performance of Otello, what else? Moments. Moments that I will remember of yes. the career? Yes, in which you'll say, that night at La Scala. It's difficult to say it, fortunately, because they have been many. many. <laughs> They have been many. Of course, there are emotional moments like my debut at the Met, yeah. debut at La Scala, debut in Madrid, my yeah. own country, yeah. my own home. Uh, the 100th anniversary of Otello at the Met, the night I did uh, the Trojan at the Met. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the 100th anniversary was at La Scala, sorry. And uh, many, many different things. It's difficult, you know. I, I think I will miss probably even nights and they were not so so perfect but something was emotional something was there but i think the important thing it will be as we talked before you know mm -hmm. to be able to say that i retire in time and the public is not saying oh my god why why he's still singing you know yeah, exactly this exactly. is the big worry you know for let me singer. just watch you one more time this is fedora and you were playing loris epanop and you're telling princess fedora uh, that love itself forbids you not to love. Uh -huh. Rotate. Is it true that most, if you and, and five other people equally knowledgeable about opera were in this room, is there one person that you would all look at and say, he was the greatest singer ever to stand on an operatic stage? Would it be Enrico Caruso? Would it be someone else? Would it be you? Is there some unanimous choice as to the greatest voice in well, I think it is a matter of 
personal taste and opinion, you know. As far as I'm concerned, I never heard Caruso alive, but for what I have heard in the recordings, or what I, everybody says, you know, I mean, it's no doubt, and it was the greatest. He was. He was the greatest. Because? Because of the absolutely a strength of his voice, especially in the that famous tessiture bit we were talking in between the F yeah. and the F B flat, the beauty of this voice, the fullness, the blooming of this sound, you know, the strength. I mean, it was unbelievable. I really, for me, for me, absolutely, without any doubt. When you look at all those people that we talked about, conductors, what about houses? Any, I mean, we mentioned La Scala, we mentioned the Met, and we mentioned... Washington. Washington, yes. And, uh, of course, the Vienna, Covent Garden. Uh, the Covent Garden, yeah. And some of the great ones. And in the, in the United States also, of course, the uh, Chicago, San Francisco, right. Los Angeles, which I have been very, very close to all these companies. Also in Los Angeles, I have been advisor since, since 85. Uh, so why did you take the Washington job? Because I... Uh, Artistic director of the Washington office. Yes. Because I, as I said before, I have always have dreaming as a child to see the way my parents, they were doing their own things. And I think I have a pretty good judgment about casting, you know, and I really want to do it one day. And it came the offer, like at the right moment. I, I don't say yes immediately. I say it, I really have to think it over. But I decide to do it because I, I like to be involved in this before I finish the career. I like to prepare my next career before. Because I think that it could be the overlapping is right, is there. My connection right now with all the singers, with the conductors, with the directors, with the designers is great, is big, you know? So why to wait for that to wear out? Right now is when I am like this. I have my competition going on very strongly. I can decide. This is the moment that I can decide, and I, I have five years since I started my competition. Big amount of singers, they are coming through that competition, and they're making great careers. If I want to create also an exciting opera house, it's happening. I just have a phenomenal uh, performance of Romeo and Juliet there with a couple, and they said it has been a perfect couple, you know, doing Romeo and Juliet, which was Elisabeth Futral and Marcello Giordani. And they were really so believable as the characters, you know. Then I want to be able to, as close as you can, because many times you have great ideas here, yeah. you put it into paper, it looks fine, and then at the last moment somebody cancels or something is changed, you know. So when things they can realize, I think that I, I thought it was very important, the capital of the nation, yeah. Opera House, and I think it has a great possibility. It's a public there, and uh, the results, they have been great the first season, yeah. and so far what is going yeah, but on. But you got a new conductor at the National Symphony. Yes, yes, Jonas with uh, Jonas Latkin, which was conducting now the Pagliacci, which, by the way, also we have been taping for PBS. It is a, <laughs> the, 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 it's a Fidelity production, so it's going to be soon yeah. also. Is the there anything, anything that Placido Domingo wishes he has done, could do, or had done, that he has not done? Well, Is there any mountain that you wanted to sit on top of that you didn't? I think that I would like very much, and I don't think I'll be able to do it probably anymore, will be to sing Tristan. I think I will record it, but I don't know if I will be able to do it on the stage. And that's a little disappointment. What can you do? I cannot complain. I have had such a repertoire, you know. But I always thought, you know, that I'd be able to do it. 
and the time is passing and of course it's, it's not getting any easier, you know. So uh, I hope at least I can leave a good recording of this. Thing. And so uh, on the eve of Thanksgiving as we record this for later yes. broadcast, you can look at yourself and say, what a ride, what a well, ride. It has been really a wonderful, wonderful career which I am very thankful, thanks God, thanks to my parents, thanks to my wife because she has helped me tremendously as she the really great, has. I mean, you gave credit to her in your book, but you... Yeah, the great mentor, and she's a very successful stage director now, doing really beautiful productions also. My family, because they have sacrificed a lot for myself, because the children, even when they were kids, they, they have to come from Barcelona, where we used to live, and spend a weekend in London or in Hamburg, because I was singing. I think I, uh, I thank really everybody, and, uh, you know, especially to be able to live in this world of music and art and the opera, which, of course, is a fascinating world. So where are you going to celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, in a place that is called <laughs> Placido Domingo, you know, about my adventures. I, I open a restaurant. Now, I swear to you, I yes. swear to you, I was on 49th Street today to get a passport picture. Uh -huh. And I walked out, and somebody walked up to me, and they, the fan. Yeah. And they said to me, um, what do you, Placido Domingo, who's on the show tonight? I said, Placido Domingo. I'm taping a show with Placido Domingo. And they said, his restaurant, is that his restaurant? So is it your restaurant? Yes, that's right, yes. It's a Spanish food, and I, and it's a, certainly I, I find out that in New York, you cannot find too many places that is open after the performance. Perhaps for the public, but not for the artists. And I like to go with friends and enjoy it, you know, and it is... Why do so many of us want to own our own restaurant where we can go and take our friends and sit and enjoy good food and good wine and... I don't know, good because it's a difficult job, you know, to do. But, you know, after a year, it's going, it's going wonderful. The people is coming a lot and uh, they are happy with the food and uh, we have a very good, very good uh, cook, you know, from So you Spain. show up and, and may go back into the kitchen and check on things? Oh yes, I, I try the things. I, uh, I, I put a little bit of, <coughs> of weight because I was trying. I, wasn't say. I was trying, you know, but uh, everything is going fine. Yeah. It's going fine. With There's it. a CD which yeah. you, you're proud of, which is called. It's the Mialma Latina Two. It is, you know, all those beautiful songs that you dance. I'm sure that you have danced to through that music. <laughs> all those uh, songs, and they are from Mexico to Buenos Aires. You know, there are beautiful songs and. Uh, and I, it's, it's the music I grew up yeah. in Mexico when I, when I was a kid, you know, and this is a beautiful, beautiful Your Latin melodies, soul. and I, I really love it. And there are so, <laughs> so many, you know, that I don't know how many more I will record, maybe the Miel Malatina, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know. Thanks. Pacero Domingo, one of the great talents ever to walk onto the stage and to give great voice to the great music of our time and any other time. We thank you for sharing this conversation with us, and we will see you next.